Parshat Vayetze, this week we discussed Yaakov running away, but not Yaakov running away from Eretz Yisrael to Lavan like you think he would because last week's Parsha ends with Yaakov being told to run away, but actually Yaakov running away at the end of the Parsha. Why is he running away? What's going on over there? And when we dived into the Psukim, we realized that the word escaping that we see there means something entirely different than we may think, and it shines a whole interesting light on what the story is, why he needs to escape, and what this means for Yaakov. Exactly. There's a really repeating theme at the end of the story of Yaakov and Lavan when he leaves Lavan. Very interesting words the Torah uses to describe what's going on over there. It's a very interesting so it reminds us all the way to Yitziat Mitzrayim because it seems to be the exact same format over there in the Psukim. Hope you enjoy it. Take a look. So this week, Parashat Vayetze, and really, if I tell you that in this week's parasha we find Yaakov Avinu running away, your mind will probably straight away go to the beginning of the parasha because that's how we ended last week's parasha when Rivka tells Yaakov that he has to run away to her brother because she's afraid Esav might do to him something. However, really, Yaakov actually in the beginning of the parasha just leaves Vayetze Yaakov. When we talk about Yaakov running away in this week's parasha, we are talking about the end of the parasha, where Yaakov decides it's time to leave Lavan's house and go back to Eretz Yisrael. And for some reason, he decides to do this by running away. It's not only mentioned once, like by Rivka, but it's actually mentioned again and again and again at the end of the parasha that Yaakov decided to run away and he is running away and the Torah says that he ran away and Lavan blames him for running away. And really you have to ask over there, what's going on? Why is Yaakov running away from Lavan? Now, if you say it's because he's afraid that Lavan might cheat him and might hurt him, might do something to him. Well, six years ago, he already came over to Lavan and asked him to leave. And then Lavan said to him, don't leave until you make some money, let me pay you. Please let me pay you. He begged Yaakov to pay him. And then really they had this deal where Yaakov will work for him. So now go back to Lavan, say, deal is done. I made enough money. Let me go home. But Yaakov doesn't do that. Yaakov decides it's time to leave Lavan because Lavan is not treating him the same way he treated him until today. Now it's time to leave and he decides to run away. Why is Yaakov running away? Why does Yaakov need to run away from Lavan? What's going on over here when Yaakov decides to go back to Eretz Israel? It's a very interesting question. And actually when we look Look at the Pasuk that describes Yaakov running away. We'll see something interesting. It says that Yaakov stole the heart of Lavan. He hid from Lavan. Why did he steal his heart? Because he didn't tell him that he's running away. Well, I mean, if he's running away, of course he didn't tell him. That's the whole point of running away. No, you run away and you don't tell. But maybe not. What does it mean he didn't tell him that he was running away? Maybe Livroch is not exactly what we think. And I think we can see this also in last Parsha, as you mentioned. We see that Rivka tells Yaakov he needs to run away. What would we expect the next Pasuk to be? At night, Yaakov takes his things and escapes. But that's not what happens. The Pesukim go on. Rivka tells Yitzchak that he wants Yaakov to find a wife somewhere else and not in Eretz Canaan. Yitzchak gives Yaakov a bracha and sends him on a mission to find a wife. Esav sees all of this and he even makes conclusions based on this. Oh, my parents don't want me to marry someone from here. We've discussed this in the past and he marries Ishmael's daughter. Where's the escape? If Livroch means to escape in hiding, and the whole point is to escape Esav, how exactly is he running away and hiding from Esav when Esav sees this whole thing and they say goodbye and he goes up and leaves? What does Livroch actually mean? And to take this one step even further, if we look at the psukim here, we'll see it sounds very familiar to other psukim. When Am Yisrael, all of Am Yisrael ran away, when did we run away? Well, we didn't run away. We got up and we were sent out of Egypt. But after three Three days, just like here, we have the Pasuk by Yugad le Lavan, Ki Barach Yaakov. Lavan was told that Yaakov escaped. Also, there we have a Yugad le Melech Paro, Ki Barach that the nation escaped. What are you talking about? You sent them out. What do you mean they escaped? So we say no because they said they're going for three days, but what does that word Barach mean? It obviously doesn't mean in hiding because there was no hiding here. There was no hiding with Esau, there was no hiding over there. What does Barach actually mean? I think the word Barach is actually. An interesting word. The letters, you can switch them around, you get to a lot of different words. Barach is the opposite of chavar, is to come together. Barach is the opposite of that, is to escape, right? Is to separate. Barach is also similar to bachar, is to choose. I think barach is not about the people around you knowing or not knowing what you're doing. It's about the choice to disconnect, to separate yourself. It's the opposite of lechaber. When Am Yisrael are leaving Egypt, as long as there was this thing that maybe in three days they'll come back. 
back, they never left. The moment they weren't planning on coming back, that's the moment that they escaped. Not because no one knew that they left. It's because at that moment, they disconnected themselves from Mitzrayim. When Yaakov is sent by Rivka, it's not about escaping so Esav doesn't know. Esav could find him if he wanted. It's about, as she says, separate yourself. Let him calm down. If he sees you every day, he's, it's going to be on his mind all the time. If you leave, you separate yourself. As Rivka says, don't forget about it. Here too, when Yaakov Borah, it's the sense that Yaakov feels that he needs to get up and leave. He needs to disconnect himself from Lavan. Think about how intertwined he is with Lavan, his daughters, his grandchildren. It's all mixed together. We know about all the battles between them, but at the end of the day, they're all family, his things and their things, and they're all mixed together. And it's time Yaakov feels to just get up and separate himself from Lavan. And you ask, why doesn't he ask? He asked six years ago, but that didn't work. That's exactly the point. Six years before, he didn't borer. He didn't separate himself. He asked, and Lavan said, oh, you know what? Stay here. You'll make a little more money. You'll work with it. We'll be okay. Yaakov feels that that's exactly what he doesn't want. He feels that now it's time for him to go back. And the only way for him to actually go back is to leave Roach, is to separate himself. But what's interesting is that just like we see with Am Yisrael, when they leave Mitzrayim, they don't actually leave. And we've discussed this in Parashat B'Shalach. They still feel Vayi B'Shalach Paro Etam as if Paro sent them out. And they need another interaction with Paro and with Mitzrayim to get to the point where they actually separate themselves in Kriyat Yamsu. So to here, although they leave and try to leave Roach, they don't actually succeed until that final meeting where they meet again and then they finally come to an end and separate themselves completely. Yes, it's interesting what you're saying really about this concept of bricha, of running away, escaping, that it's not only about running away in darkness and hiding without nobody knowing, but it's more about disconnecting yourself from the past or disconnecting yourself from what you were part of in order to really make the separation and become a different entity, not connected at all to that previous entity, to that previous thing you were before. And this is what Yaakov has to do over here. But just like you're saying, Amisa didn't really leave. Not only that we mentioned that they had this mindset that Paro sent them out, but they also literally took with them stuff that belonged to the Mitzriim in Mitzrayim. They took it with them. They lent from them these objects, these stuff to take with them. So the same thing we see happening over here with Yaakov and Rachel, because besides the word Barach and the Shoresh of Barach repeating itself again and again over here, there's another word that repeats itself again and again, and that's the word of Gneva, of stealing. Because Lavan claims, you stole from me. The Torah says that Rachel Ganva et atrafim, and Yaakov stole Lavan's heart. Again, we always keep on saying you have to pay attention to the way the Torah uses the words it uses to the text, what the Torah is saying. Obviously there's a connection between the two. Obviously the Trophim did not belong to Rachel. They weren't hers. She obviously stole them from Lavan. She took them from Lavan. She took something that belonged to Lavan with her. The same thing, obviously Yaakov took with him something that still belongs to Lavan. This is still the problem over here. Like you were saying, this is why they had to have this other interaction in order to have this real final closure to close off the things between them so he can have this separation from Lavan and they needed this other meeting again to make this final disconnection between the two because Yaakov stole Lavan's heart when Yaakov steals something from Lavan he takes something from Lavan with him and he can't disconnect you can't run away disconnect and at the same time steal something from that person with you and take it with you it doesn't work same thing with Yetziat Mitzayim they took stuff with them from the Mitzrayim but that's not the Rechush Gadol the Rechush Gadol happened than Yamsuf after they had the disconnection from Mitzrayim that's when they got what they needed to get from the Mitzrayim the objects the physical objects that they had to inherit from them that they had to take from them same thing here Yaakov Avinu Rachel they take stuff from Lavan but they need this disconnection they need to disengage from Lavan and separate themselves and they can't do that while they're taking with them something and maybe maybe this is something that Lavan intended to do the entire time because six years ago when Yaakov came to him and said to him let me go with my wife and and my children, he didn't have any belongings with him. The Pasuk doesn't mention that he asks to take with him Sonu Bakal, belongings that he wanted to have with him. And Lavan tells him, hey, how about you work for me? Let me give you stuff to take with you home because this is what Lavan wants. This is how Lavan gets himself into Yaakov's life. This is how Lavan tricks Yaakov into his own life. And this we see in this week's Parsha when Yaakov says to him, I took from you nothing. Everything I did, I always gave you back more than what you gave me. Nothing that I had came from you ever Everything that I have came from Akadosh Borchu. So that
that Lavan replies, no, your sons are my sons, your daughters are my daughters. Everything that belongs to you is my belongings because this is what Lavan intended to do. He knew that the day will come when Yaakov will go back to Eretz Yisrael, but he never wanted to separate from Yaakov. He wanted to make sure that he has his name in that too, in that family too. And even though Rachel and Nea both say, we are like foreigners to him. We have no relationship with him whatsoever. We are disconnected from him. This is not what Lavan intended. Lavan intended to always be there, to always have this connection. And then after Lavan claims this to Yaakov, after Yaakov has this fight with Lavan, Vayarev, he really fights with him and he argues with Lavan and claims, I took nothing for you if already you owe me a lot more. And Lavan says, no, your sons are my sons and your daughters are my daughters. Yaakov doesn't answer to that. And it's very interesting that he doesn't answer. But maybe again, this is exactly what he's doing. He's disconnecting. Yaakov doesn't say anything to Lavan. We just see Yaakov agreeing to this peace agreement and making this Matseva. We'll get to that in a second. But Yaakov doesn't say anything. But actually, you do see him say something to his sons. And very interestingly, he doesn't claim anything to Lavan. He doesn't answer that statement of your sons are my sons, your daughters are my daughters. Yaakov doesn't answer that to Lavan, but he answers that to his sons. What does he say? He calls his sons brothers. He turns to his sons and says, brothers, gather with me these stones. Let's make this matzeva. Because for Yaakov, like you were saying, he chooses to disengage from Lavan, to disconnect from Lavan. What he had to say to Lavan, he said, that's it. There's no more relationship between them. And that's why he doesn't turn to Lavan. He turns to his sons and says, brothers, let's make the matzeva now. And again, everything in this story is very familiar, very similar to what happened to Yaakov on the way to Lavan. Because the same way he had to run away from Eretz Yisrael to Lavan. And the same way he made a matzeva when he left. He does the same thing here. He creates a matzeva now here again over here to remind himself and to remind his sons that Lavan is done. The story with Lavan is done. They are moving now towards Eretz Yisrael. They're moving towards their meeting with Esav Bezrat Hashem and to the point where they can start actually creating Am Yisrael. You know, based on that, it's very interesting. What actually happens in this peace treaty? You know, usually when you make a peace treaty, it's about finding something in common. Let's, you know, make peace and then we'll come together and we'll be friends and we'll work together and everything will be great. It's the exact opposite. Everything about this agreement is let's make an agreement. And what's the agreement going to be? You stay where you are. I stay where I am. We'll never come together ever again. That's the peace agreement is let's completely separate. And it's interesting. We'll see going through the whole story here. Everything is double. Even the name of the play. Lavan calls it one name. Yaakov calls it another name. You know, we go on. He talks about your God, my God. Everything is split. We're split. The name even is split. Our languages are split. What Yaakov is doing now and what Yaakov maybe also started doing when Rivka sent him away is he's separating himself from Esau and now he's separating himself from Lavan. And maybe this bricha, and as we say in the Haftarah, by Yibrach Yaakov's Daram, this bricha is probably something so essential to who Yaakov is. Yaakov needs to leave Roach because Yaakov is about building Am Yisrael. Yaakov isn't like Yitzchak and Av who had children who were part of Am Yisrael and had that were not. Yaakov is about building the home. It's about building Am Yisrael. And to do that, to be that Am Levadad Ishkon, to create that nation, what he needs to do is detach himself. Not get stuck with his challenges with Esav. Not get lost in Galus with all the riches of Lavan. Separate himself and build himself, build who he is. It's interesting, the word Rivka uses when she tells him to escape is Brach Lecha. Escape to you. Escaping the brach is about being able to detach so you can be you. That's what I think is happening here and that's why this agreement here is also not an agreement of coming together. It's an agreement of separating to every single aspect. Our language, our gods, our location, everything is separated. Very good, very good. And you know also an interesting fact that when Yaakov leaves Lavan, it says that he's going towards Har Gilad, Yimel Lamed Ein Dalid. The same word but spelled differently of what they call this Mateva Gal Ed seems to be that they are already in the Gilad, but he gives it a different name because it's not Gilad, it's a Gal Ed. Gal from the meaning of revealing, like you're saying, revealing to himself, to his sons, to his brothers, that they are now something else. They are something different. They are separated from Lavan. They are separated from Esav. They're about to create Am Israel, about to get the name of Israel in X 
next week's parasha. This is what Yaakov is revealing here, but as usual, we're out of time, so we'll end here. We'll just remind our viewers again what we've discussed the past couple of years. Last year, we discussed the story when Yaakov gets to Padan Aram, he gets to the well, and for some reason, he opens up a conversation over there with the shepherds by the well. So much so, he's so deep into the conversation, he almost misses Rachel that arrives with the son. He almost misses his shidduch. What's going on over here? What is this big conversation about? What's the story over there by the well about? We'll link that video at the end of this one. Also, two years ago, we discussed another theme that repeats itself in the parsha: the theme of dreams. What are dreams about? The dream in the beginning of the parsha, the dreams at the end of the parsha. There's so many dreams going on. We're used to Yosef being the master of dreams, but obviously he got that from Yaakov because there's so many dreams in this week's parasha. What are these dreams about? What are dreams about? We'll link that video too. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to share it around. Like, comment on YouTube below. We love those comments. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and help us grow the channel. And Shkoyach Yitzi. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And we'll talk again next week.